Mike McFarlane in the movie Bros, which is such an important movie to us. I think it's the first time we've ever actually been able to send our entire audience to a screening before the show. So you could Amazing. know the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was amazing. We're so invested in this film because I think it's going to be a huge success. This is a genre so near and dear to my heart produced by Judd Apatow, who is the king of the male rom-com, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Um, but back to what we left on the commercial break for, Luke, give us the details that the first thing you ever said to Billy was, you look angry? Yes, in fact, those are the first words that Aaron says to Bobby when we meet, and it was my audition scene. So the first thing I got to say to Billy Eichner was, you look angry. Yeah, and I said, I hear you're boring. Yeah. Because those are the lines. Luke and I did not know each other before he came into audition. It was very nerve-wracking. Uh, Billy Eichner is, you know, brilliant and funny and hilarious, and I came into a room and Judd Apatow was sitting there, and Nick Stoller and all these executives and stuff like that. So I, I kind of... I kind of had a little bit of that Aaron energy where I was sort of protecting with my sort of like kind of saying a not super nice thing to somebody, but yeah. it, it, it sort of, it was how I was feeling too. I was very nervous. And I think yeah. when we are nervous, we sometimes don't have the most uh, generous things to say to people. Yeah, well, that's how Bobby and Aaron, when they meet, they both have their defenses up. You know, they're both trying in different ways. Walls. Walls, Walls. right? And, and they express themselves very differently. My character is very outspoken. At one, I don't want to give it away, but this becomes an issue with Aaron and Bobby in the movie, especially when Aaron's parents visit, yeah, right? Um, because I'm a big personality, and Aaron is very drawn to that, but also a little scared of that. One of my favorite moments in the film, if I may, which is you're in the museum. Mm. This is a, The museum has so much merit because it's about telling people's stories. And for me, that is a welcome mat that is non-divisive. That's just our history. You can't change it. We need to talk about it, and we need to listen and hear about these stories. And yet your character is looking at himself in the museum, and your placard card just starts to erase. Mm. I was so haunted, so beautifully haunted by that moment. What were you trying to tell in that moment as the writer and the filmmaker Mm -hmm. Why is the name getting erased? What do we do in order to sort of erase mm -hmm. our potency and mm -hmm. our, our mark in the world? Yeah, well, um, my character in the movie is working on what we call the first national LGBTQ plus history museum, which is about to open, right? And we don't talk a lot about LGBTQ history, right? And LGBTQ people often don't know our own history because... It's been a race that's not talked about in schools. It's not part of the, the common cultural conversation. So we don't grow up knowing about all the LGBTQ historical figures and what our contributions were, which I think has more of an impact on us than we realize. Yeah. Right? And that's under threat again. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's still something we're very much dealing with. And so when his character and Luke as an actor bring so much to this scene also. But um, when Aaron, I bring him to see the museum for the first time and he walks around and, and finally sees all the contributions of LGBTQ people throughout history in this hallway of legends, we call it, that I'm walking him through. And then he sees an empty display and sees his own reflection and in his, and in his head sees the card, which for all the other historical figures describes their contribution to history. And he realizes that I think his card in his mind ends up saying Aaron Shepard worked out a lot, hated his job, did CrossFit, <laughs> right? As if that was his contribution to life. And he's realizing in that moment that he hasn't had the type of full life. He hasn't contributed as much as he could or, or he actually wants to deep down. And I think that really shakes him up although ultimately inspires him, I think. It also is such an advocacy for go out there and live a life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Create stories, write your chapters, make it rich. We get one shot here on this planet that we know of. Mm -hmm. um, I, um... But it's hard and it's scary. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard and it's scary. And I think on every level we're continuing to be challenged to sort of live bigger, live fuller, live more honestly. I, I, mm -hmm. It's just frightening. And, and even if you do, you can feel self-conscious about it. Of course. Because that's not for everyone. Yeah. And I'm not sure there is one way anybody is supposed to be other than who they gosh darn are and have that be okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and absolutely. As long as you're not hurting people. Yeah. 
as long as you are gentle and kind. Mm. I am convinced we are here to take care of each other on this planet. And for those who don't subscribe to that, we can keep our distance from. But I just think you guys have really done such an extraordinary job in this film of bringing everybody in in what I believe will be a timeless classic. Oh, wow, thank you very much. Thank it's you so, so true. Now, in the spirit of Bros, I was wondering, would you guys play a game with me? Yeah. Of course. Okay, good, okay. okay. It's, a, <laughs> it's a twist on Never Have I Ever, but we're calling it Brose or Rose. Oh, love. Oh, look at that. Okay. All right, here's okay. how it works. I'm gonna read a scenario, and if you've done it, you can drink. Oh, okay. And uh, maybe tell me a quick story behind the story. Okay. All right, um, sent a dirty text to the wrong person. I actually have done that, yes. Oh. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Uh I, I, was, I was gonna send a progress picture to my trainer because he was very concerned that I look a certain way. Um, so I think I was standing in my boxers in my bathroom and I sent it to my best friend accidentally. Oh, wow. I sent it to Keith. Oh, yeah, you did? I That's did. not that dirty. Well, it's not that dirty, but, but it's dirty. And it's Keith, it's safe. Yeah. Yeah. Let's drink anyway. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> Delicious. Have you ever embellished, you know, to impress a date? Oh, yeah. Oh, sure, yeah, of course. <laughs> Have you ever given or received a lap dance? Yes, yes. I do. <laughs> this is funny being on this talk show. When I was a kid, I saw Donahue. I saw the Chippendale dancers on Donahue. He talks about that a lot. And it changed my life. Yeah. <laughs> totally changed my life. I was like, I like something about that. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't quite identify it, but I did remember telling my parents I wanted to be a stripper. Wow. And that magic mic happened and they didn't call me. Yeah, but yeah. in bros, you strip down a lot. I do strip down a lot. Well, that's yeah. actually our next question for the game. Have you ever been nude in public? We're pretty naked in the movie. We're pretty naked yeah, in the movie. I've yeah, I've been there. Yeah, Big, like I... <laughs> um, has anyone ever built anything from scratch? Yes, I am a woodworker. It is my hobby and my passion. That's yes. not a joke. He's actually a woodworker. I am actually a woodworker. <laughs> if yes. you're not checking every box, Luke, like seriously, I've watched pictures of your woodwork. First of all, it's beautiful craftsmanship. Thank, thank you. You're literally like Owen Wilson in like Meet the Fockers. Like you're a serious. Like you come up where you're like, I just like whittled this hoppa out of like oh, a block right. of that's wood. Right. Yeah. I love no, it. Who are you? It's a great hobby to have, honestly. I think especially in you know movie making and acting, what we do is so ephemeral. And then to be able to actually go into my garage, I open up my big door and it smells like sawdust. And I get to make something that lasts forever. And that's very different than what we do as an actor. I feel the same way about takeout food and posing. <laughs> Me too. I get off work and I'm like, what do I order? What am I watching? Me too. I, I've, I've literally never turned on the stove in my kitchen. Yeah. Not once. <laughs> Not once. He's building doors. I know. <laughs> I'm like, how do you yeah. do it? Well, I would like to propose a toast to a beautiful film that comes out in theaters today, which will be a timeless classic and open up the doors for many people in the future. You are building something very powerful and everlasting here, and you guys built it. You're the makers of it. So actually, you do build something. Yeah, yeah. well done. Yeah. 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 Yeah.